Call to order a regular meeting for the Normal Town Council for Monday, November 1st, 2021. Please call the roll. Mayor Coos? Here. Mrs. Lorenz? Here. Mr. Nord? Here. Ms. Smith? Here. Ms. Cummings? Here. Mr. Preston? Here. Mr. McCarthy? Here. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we have one person for public comment prior to the meeting and one person for public comment at the end of the meeting. And for public comment prior to the beginning of the meeting, uh, we have with us uh, former Heartland President Rob Wilmer, Widmer and uh, current board chair of CDM, as I recall. Uh, I'll sh come up to the podium and uh, just a reminder, you have three minutes for a comment and please do state your name for the record. Yeah. Yes, my name is Rob Whitmer, uh, resident here of Bloomington Normal for several years now. Uh, let me express my appreciation for having the opportunity to address the council this evening. I do appreciate it. Uh, specifically, I uh, have a few brief comments in reference to contract with JRA for the preparation of a new exhibits master plan for the Children's Discovery Museum. While I am now retired after working several decades in the education community and enjoy spending time as a grandparent of 14 wonderful grandchildren, I speak with you tonight as a member of the Children's Discovery Museum Foundation Board and as the mayor indicated, the board's current chair. The Children's Discovery Museum Foundation is a group of volunteers whose sole purpose is to fundraise and advocate for the Children's Discovery Museum. CDM's last master plan was created in 2011 with input from museum staff, local families, and community stakeholders, as would be, as would be the case with the new plan. That plan led to five exhibit updates and new installations, including My back, Great Backyard, You've Got the Power, Innovation Station, The Imaginaire, and the Healthy Me exhibit. The foundation raised a little over $1 million through grants, private gifts, and fundraising events to make that 2011 plan come to life. Our volunteer efforts to fundraise and support the CDM will be strongly enhanced by having the proposed new exhibits master plan. This plan will prepare the CDM for the future and provide a well-focused roadmap for the foundation to effectively support the museum's important work. As a final comment, it's important to recognize that this approach represents the museum's pursuit of professional best practices and gives board members confidence that the projects one asks people to fund are truly worthy of their support. I strongly encourage you to approve the resolution before you tonight. Thank you for your time and attention. Uh, we move to the omnibus agenda. Items considered routine and will be handled with one vote unless a council member would like to pull an item for discussion. Ms. Cummings? I'd like to excuse for any bills that I've incurred. Thank you. Mr. Nord? I'd like to pull items B as in boy and D as in dog. Motion for approval. Move please. approval. Thank you. Uh, items considered on the omnibus are approval of the minutes of the public hearing of October 18th, 2021, and approval of the minutes of the regular council meeting of October 18th, 2021, and a motion to approve uh, the 2022 year uh, town meeting calendar. Please call the roll. Mrs. Lorenz? Aye. Mr. Nord? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Cummings? Aye. Mr. Preston? Aye. Mr. McCarthy? Aye. Mayor Coos? Aye. Those two items are approved. Item B is a report to receive and file <clears throat> Town of Normal Expenditures for Payment as of October 27th, 2021. 
Mr. Nord. I so move. Second. Thank you. Mr. Nord. Thank you. On expense page one and two under city manager expense, there's two expenses for $500 each. Both of these are for youth on a mission. Um, one of them is for a mentor, the other is a stipend. Um, I've previously emailed with uh, the town manager and these are expenses related to staffing or volunteering that. And would you clarify that that is a one-time only payment? This isn't gonna be a reoccurring payment? That is true, that is true. Is this on? There you go. Okay, okay. I'll talk a little louder. Um, that is true, Mr. Nord, that is one-time payment. Okay, so throughout the entire of program, these individuals will not be getting an additional payment. That's what I would understand a one-time payment to be, Mr. Nord. Okay. Then, um, this program, we've got a couple issues with it. Um, you know, it seems like a lot of it is similar to the Bloomington one-on-one, -on -one, you know, which educates people as to how the town of normal government operates, which at that I'm in favor of, but there's, we're excluding, it's, it's only open to children at Unit 5 schools and UHI, so we're excluding all children that are homeschooled, that go to private schools, and these are families that are taxpayers in normal that are funding this as well. So that I disagree with, because you know if we collect tax revenue, it should be for the general welfare of everyone, not just specific to certain schools. And then the other piece that I have issue with with this program is in addition to what Bloomington's doing, what we're doing, which is not what they're doing, is we're lobbying. These children will be lobbying. They'll be taught how to lobby. And the Youth on a Miss Mission states that they will engage in activities like community service, lobbying, and strategic planning. Um, and that the council will directly involve the students in policy making as well as special projects. Um, and they will um, go to advocacy training for state and local issues. So when they're setting policy, who is it that's going to be determining which side of any political issue they should be lobbying for? You know, that is not the role of local government to define that for these kids. And that's why I've got, well, those are my issues with that. And then, the second item I had. Could I, could I address that, Mr. Mayor? I think um, we should, um, Mr. Nord, I'm gonna put you on pause on your comment and. Um, sure, I mean, I, I'm just not sure if we, if we wanna rehash the, that particular program where we're, when we're only talking about the expense, but I appreciate you hearing that you would like to see the program expand to include um, students from more schools and homeschooled situations, which is great. We'll look at uh, doing something like that next year, perhaps, but this was the first year, so the plan is to start small, grow the program. This is very different than I believe the program Bloomington has. You might not be familiar with the citizen um, engagement program that we used to have pre-COVID, where we um, had an educational program where we had citizens participate, and it was a multi-month experience to learn about the municipality. I think that m more closely mirrors Bloomington's program. Um, this is not it. This program is built off a template um, that we discovered through the National League of Cities, working very closely with Ms. Cummings, who is active in that program. In regard to um, issues that they may address, um, I think what you would learn is that the lobbying is the Illinois Municipal League Lobby Day of which people here at the council table participate in, the, um, in many occasions and this program would include those students in that experience. Um, so it would be topics that are of interest to the town of Normal that we partner with the Illinois Municipal League on. And in, for, for additional conversation about the program, 
Um, I think that we would defer it to the future and let Ms. Cummings um, discuss. Ms. Cummings? Absolutely. Thank you for the floor. Um, first of all, it, it tickles me that somebody could read something and take it completely out of context, completely. Um, this program has been designed and modeled after the National League of Cities. Um, I did attend, and Ms. Um, Ms. Reese is aware of sessions I attended through, uh, excuse me, through the National League of Cities um, to be able to bring this type of program here. Um, also meeting with other groups that are already established across this country. While in the state of Illinois, we don't have anything very similar, there are um, other communities across this country who have similar programs. When it speaks of lobbying, it's the learning about how to, as a municipal leader, which we all, um, as Ms. Reese has spoken about, on this day it has the opportunity to do. We have two opportunities to do that at a state level for Illinois Municipal League for their lobby day, as well as through the National League of C Cities when they do their congressional summit, which is in Washington, D.C., where other community leaders across this country go and lobby the federal government and we talk about issues, one of them having been, we were very instrumental in the infrastructure bill that eventually got passed. And that went on for almost three years um, and was very big, you know, one of the things that I was also a part of and glad to be able to say that. Um, so those students will have those opportunities to learn those things. Also, because we're doing this through the, um, and kind of in conjunction with the National League of Cities, they will have their own sessions once we get to the point as a, um, or, or as a group to be able to send some at least one or two students, they will be able to go and sit in on sessions that are geared towards youth um, and they'll meet other youth, part of youth commissions and youth councils across this country and actually do advocacy work and lobbying as well. So this was not something haphazardly done. We've done our research and we know what we're doing and trying to provide. As far as very much inclusion, can we grow? Absolutely. But we have been very intentional on being all inclusive as possible and very diverse as a group. Back to you, Mr. Nord. Um, on this issue? No, because I'm on a different topic, so oh. finish this. On this issue, go right ahead. I'm kind of surprised that we're delving as deep into this issue beyond clarification, but as long as we've opened the door. Um, you know, it, there appears to be about $1,100 worth of, of expenses in today's um, bills. And thank you for clarifying that that appears to be all that will be expended for this program. It's not. No? no? That's this bill cycle only. I thought that these were one time. Uh, let's not have discussion. Okay. Table. Well, I, so um, I, maybe that makes my point. There has not been a lot of clarity to others on this council what the scope of this program is. It sounds admirable. I don't, I don't doubt that at all. Um, you know, I, I, I know that many of our, our school districts, social studies departments have um, engaged in, in, or in, in activities like this, taking kids to Iowa caucuses and, um, you know, to DC and, and down to Springfield. So, um, you know, I, it, it is happening in our community um, and I just don't understand maybe the scope and, and how this came about and the reason that we are endorsing it. I'm not sure who owns this. Is it staff? Is it council? Is it Ms. Cummings? So those are some questions that perhaps at a future strategic planning session we can clarify, as well as future costs. Mr. Nord. Thank you. My second item is on page 19 of the expenses under stormwater management fund. There's an uptown drainage study. We had communicated a little bit, but I didn't quite get a yes or no answer. With this expense for this drainage study, does any of that expense relate to the underpass? No. So we're doing a drainage study in uptown and we're not including the potential impact of the underpass? No, I believe I explained in my email that this particular study using Baxter and Woodman is to address a, a drainage problem that currently exists. We're trying to deal with a, a flooding issue. Okay, that seems a little, um, 
short-sighted knowing that the underpass is coming and there's going to be drainage issues with that and that should at least include that if we're going to be doing it mr well, nord i would i would point out uh in the email response to you uh, that was addressed and that drainage issues would be part of phase two design done by uh, wp okay so with storm winter so with this expense the underpass is not a part of it all right that i just don't correct. understand this is that. dealing with a current problem that we asked back that we have contract with baxter and woodman to evaluate and hopefully provide a recommendation on how to solve a current flooding issue um, in regard to the underpass as mayor indicated that is still being designed and there's a different firm that's working on the design of the underpass project okay thank you that's all i had further on bills Please call the roll. Mr. Nord? No. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Cummings? Aye. Mr. Preston? Aye. Mr. McCarthy? Aye. Mrs. Lorenz? Aye. Mayor Coos? Aye. Uh, the re report to receive and file is approved. Item D is a resolution to accept the proposal and authorize a contract with JRA for the preparation of a new exhibits master plan for the Children's Discovery Museum in an amount not to exceed $50,000. Mr. Nord. I so move. Second. Um, for clarification, um, this was bid out, but there was no indication as to what the other bidders bid. Um, could you tell us the other bids? Uh, for clarification, it was not bid out. This is a request for proposals, which is different than a formal bid. The request for proposals allows, it is a process that is used regularly to solicit uh, services, professional services in this regard. So the, we, we submitted our notice of seeking proposals to eight vendors. Excuse me, while I'm talking, I'm going to invite uh, Ms. Wisman to come forward and she might be able to address questions in greater detail. Um, but we did invite eight uh, experienced uh, firms to submit a proposal, of which four responded. In the request for proposals, what it does is that process allows us an opportunity to evaluate the proposals based on experience, um, their, their book of business, um, their not only price, but their timeline, their process, as well as their references. And so um, the, we can evaluate the proposals based on multiple things than just price. And so I will ask uh, Ms. Wisman to jump in and explain a little bit more on the selection process. Excuse me, since I only have 10 minutes, um, is this going to take up my time? On Does this that, um, do, did I answer your question? If not, then I'll ask. Well, it's just a lot of the other info I may not need. I'm just looking for what was the couple costs for these other four that turned in bids. I think, uh, Mr. Nord, that seems irrelevant because uh, she explained the process is not a, it's not a bid. I'm still asking how much it was. We'll, get, the, we'll get that information to you. I it's would, probably not yeah. at hand. Well, do I think Ms. Wisman maybe can say how they all played out in terms of price? Yeah, they all were in the same ballpark. One of them was a little bit over because they had an additional service they were offering. So they were all right around fifty thousand, and there was one that had an additional eight thousand. That was that was suggested for some additional services. Okay, thank you. And then the write-up says that this is, or I guess maybe the not the write-up, but this is not. An official um, report. What do you mean by that? This is not, oh, this is an official planning document. All right, so this is an official planning document. Now, this is not going to be reimbursed by the foundation. Is that correct? This is coming just out of the general fund? Correct. It was budgeted for in this fiscal year. Okay. And approved. So my understanding, what, what council has been told for the longest time is the foundation reimburses the cost of exhibits. Um, how is this not related to exhibits? What the foundation fundraises for is for the fabrication of the exhibits. So that is the most expensive part. That's where the 
sometimes million dollar plus price tag happens. It's the hardest thing to budget for and it's the relationship that the foundation has with the town. So historically, the exhibits are paid for by the foundation, whether that's through grants or through direct fundraising, through gifts. Um, it is the foundation that has that responsibility. This is a planning document, which is a best practice for museums. Um, institutional planning is a big part of what museums do to remain relevant, uh, to remain um, uh, up to our standards, and to be able to better serve our larger community. It's part of the best practices for the American Alliance of Museums, which we're members of. It's pretty standard for museums to do this. Sure, and I'm not, and I'm not questioning that. I mean, my children go to the museum, we love the museum, but this is something that I thought we were getting reimbursed, and that's where the question comes from. I've asked for the document defining, the policy document defining what's reimbursed, what's not reimbursed, and I've yet to receive it, so hopefully I get that soon to, to clarify all these questions. Um, but in my communication with Ms. Reese, the foundation does not decide which exhibits will be built or how they should build, that this is a professional staff decision. So, Which is why the, the department pays for this study. This is a planning document for museum professionals to create the plan for moving forward the exhibits as well as the museum. Um, and, and the people who are on our foundation are not museum professionals. We'd be, we'd be lucky to have a few if we could find some, but they are on our staff, and that is who we who we want to plan for the future of these exhibits. Sure, I would like the citizens, the community to, to, to have some input. This is their tax they dollars. Do. This is their tax dollars, but Ms. Reese had said that, you know, this is the professional staff deciding. So how will the community That's what this process input? that we're asking you to approve tonight is okay. for. This is actually, our, our planning process includes a great deal of public input and working with stakeholders. We work with our local schools, home schools as well, as you mentioned earlier. We work with um, child care facilities that we partner with. Anybody that wants to have input, our museum families, visitors, we, we actually have quite a bit of stakeholder input. So. Okay. Okay. Good. Because the initial email didn't have that, and that was that was a concern. So I'm glad that the community is being involved. So thank you. And, and just to be clear, um, what we're talking, what the, the email is talking about, is the the contract to go with JRA, and whether or not the foundation was going to pay for it. So the explanation is, of course the planning process now you're seeking citizen input that's great that's the planning process staff is responsible for implementing the plan and the foundation is a significant partner in the implementation in terms of making sure we have adequate dollars to pay for that capital asset sure and speaking of the dollars um, i just want to point out that just earlier this year you got a you were able to get two hundred thousand dollar grant for the Discovery Museum, which is fantastic, and you've submitted another one for $225,000. Are you talking about the Shuttered Venues grant? Yeah, there were some CDM grants that She's been highly successful Ms. Reese had sent in, it out. Uh, grant awards this year. We, we had over half a million for the Children's Discovery Museum for that particular grant. Okay, good. You know, it would be nice if some of those dollars could be used to help alleviate some of the burden on the local taxpayers for helping to operate the, uh, I think CDM we're going to move on here, Mr. Nord. Yeah. You're so going. It, thank you, and you're going sure. circular on this. Just, just, just for just to alleviate any confusion that may gen be generated by that, that the shuttered venues grant did directly go to the general fund to offset um, lost revenue from a COVID year and to help the operation because of um, the pandemic. So that is certainly the purpose of the grant. It did go to the general fund. Good, thank you, good job. Ms. Smith. So to bring us back to the subject before the council tonight, the foundation and staff had gone out to solicit quotes and proposals from skilled vendors experienced in the area of planning for museums of the eight contacts, you had four responds. And after evaluating those four responses that all came in fairly close in dollar amount of cost, you felt the credentials, the experience, the, the ability to, 
to respond and work with the town were best suited by J.R. A. A. Mm -hmm. and, and so that is where the recommendation is to accept this proposal to move forward with them doing this work. Thank you. That's correct. Thank you. Further on the side? Oh, Mr. McCarthy. Yep. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, although I intend to say this, congratulations again on all your success getting us hundreds of thousands of dollars to make it cheaper for our community to have a Children's Discovery Museum and have great exhibits. And uh, 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 I believe Mr. Widmer's there. I can't see. There, he's still there. Excellent. Uh, uh, please convey the council's thanks to the volunteers on the foundation that work very, very hard uh, also to bring in, as you did, over a million dollars to uh, help keep a Children's Discovery Museum operating uh, during a pandemic and, and keep it at a very reasonable cost to our taxpayers. I think uh, we've got a shining star here in our community and, and unfortunately for whatever reason, some folks uh, focus, uh, choose to not focus on the real story here, which is we've got great community support for our foundation and, and uh, we're bringing in lots of dollars to the community to help keep it cheap for our, for our taxpayers. Uh, just really kind of at the actual topic, the actual um, item on the agenda. So it was an RFP. This is a standard RFP process that's done every year, every quarter, all of the time, follows our policies and procedures as usual. Right. So this yeah. is the exact same one we do all of the time, Mr. Nord, that I think you and I had an exchange at a different council meeting. Point of order. We talked about an RFP. What point of order? What's your point of order? Um, council conversations should be about the topic, not directed at <laughs> each other. It's an RFP. You brought up R the RFP process. I'm talking about the RFP. Uh, it's an RFP. Continue, Mr. McCarthy. Thank you. So I, I just wanted to clarify for anybody who's watching at home, friends in the media, anybody who's here, this is a normal, typical financial proposal that we see uh, executed regularly and routinely. This is nothing out of the ordinary. To collect proposals is also about qualifications, just not dollars. And that's the difference in a bid process versus a, an RFP process. Uh, so just to clarify and level set, qualifications matter in this case, and that's why it's an RFP process and not a bid out process. Thanks very much. Further on this side? Um, Ms. Lorenz. Sure, I'll, uh, I'd, I'd like to lend my voice of support um, to the Children's Discovery Museum and to the foundation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Widmer, for uh, coming and speaking on behalf of the board and Ms. Wisman for speaking on behalf of the staff. Um, there, There is support for the Children's Discovery Museum um, in my heart, and I do believe in a majority of this council. Thank you. Thank you. Further? Please call the roll. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Cummings? Aye. Mr. Preston? Aye. Mr. McCarthy? Aye. Mrs. Lorenz? Aye. Mr. Nord? Aye. Mayor Coos? Aye. The resolution is approved. Uh, we have no items of uh, general orders tonight. We have one item of new business. Uh, and that is a motion to appoint um, uh, to the Human Relations C Commission, uh, Srinivas Mikulinenli, I almost got it right, um, to the Human Relations Commission. Motion for approval. So moved. Second. Discussion on this item. Mr. Nord. Um, for public education, um, could the parliamentarian or staff kind of explain the council's role and responsibility? Um, and are we required to approve whomever the mayor presents to the council? Um, no, you're not required to approve it. The council could choose not to consent to the mayor's appointment under our ordinances, it's for boards and commissions generally. Um, under our ordinances, it's the mayor points with the advice and consent of the, or with the consent of the council. Okay, thank you. After last, the last meeting, I was confused because it seemed like there was conversation where we were expected to 
or uh, required to. Um, has the public been informed and provided the opportunity to give public input with or to who's being appointed or recommended for appointment? Does the public know? Um, no, not in advance of Mayor Coos just announcing the name. I think you asked me that the last time we had an appointment, um, the conversations occur, occur generally between the candidate seeking to be appointed and Mayor Coos. I, I would add, Mr. Uh, North, that the appointment is mine. It, it, it is up to you as the council to uh, accept or reject that appointment. Uh, we have never had public uh, uh, hearings on our appointments. Uh, subjecting people to that level of scrutiny for their volunteerism for the town of normal sure i understand i just want to point out that across the border in bloomington they have appointments all the time and they let the public know so it's just very awkward that in normal the public doesn't find out until after the fact so they're not given the opportunity to speak which i think you know is wrong we should err on giving the public as much involvement with us as possible because I tried or I asked to speak with the appointment, e, the appointee or the appointee, and I did not receive a call back. So I honestly have no idea. I can't place judgment one way or the other. And as people that are entrusted by our constituents, you know, we should be making educated decisions and votes so I well mr nord I, I, will, able to. I will add that uh, across the line in normal we don't do that uh, and the council has been quite uh, comfortable for doing that for as long as i've served and much longer than before i have served as a mayor uh, two to three previous mayors i'm aware of have followed that same process and i don't want to get into an argument here but you are the only person on this council that has an issue with that. With making Get educated votes? Uh, wow. Okay, well, I do have an issue. And the only other piece I wanted to point out, because this doesn't have to do with the appointment, but has to do with the Human Commission's Relations Board. There was um, two items that were removed from what the council had put forward as their uh, um, purposes. You know, one of them is to... Um, ensure that constitutional rights and heritages point of order may, may be more fully realized by all. Point of order, Mayor. So we're we're yes. talking about a approval of an appointment, and he's off on something completely separate. Well, what's this your has point, to do Mr. with it. What's your point? Mr. Is Mr. that Mayor? I want to make sure that the having to do with the appointment realizes that constitutional rights are something in addition to just the human rights for all. Further on this item. Please call the roll. Ms. Cummings? Aye. Mr. Preston? Aye. Mr. McCarthy? Aye. Mrs. Lorenz? Aye. Mr. Nord? Respectfully, no. Ms. Smith? Aye. Mayor Coos? Aye. The appointment is approved. Uh, Mr. McCarthy, would you give us some background there? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, Quite a long background, I'll try to be uh, brief with it. Um, Mr. Srinivas Mikalenini, I hope I got that close to right, uh, has been a resident here in our community for about 20 years. Uh, he works uh, at State Farm through HTC Global Services. Um, he's been very active in our local education system, volunteering at North Point Elementary, Grove Elementary, Chittix Junior High, Normal Community High School, and with the Future Business Leaders of America, a great little group uh, I've had the opportunity to, to play a little small role in. Uh, he also served as president of the McLean County India Association in, uh, uh, in 2016 and was an executive member for many years. He led the Telugu Association of Bloomington uh, uh, in a, uh, a lingual organization in Bloomington. Uh, he also supported the Diwali Food Drive, which collected canned goods for uh, local food pantries. Uh, he enjoys volunteering, clearly, and uh, has also uh, involved himself volunteering in the Home Sweet Home Ministries, uh, Spandana Foundation, For a Better Tomorrow, Siwa International. And he's also an active member in Bright Life Foundation, 
which helps orphans to have better living standards and education in our community. Uh, he looks forward to serving uh, on our Human Relations Commission board, and he's filling a vacant seat created by the departure of Jay Tamalala with a term expiring May 31st, excuse me, March 31st, 2022. Welcome. Thank you. We called the roll on that. We did not, did we? Yeah, no, we, we didn't. Yeah, I did it. Please call the roll. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You already did. Oh, I think we did. We did. Uh, that concludes our business for council. We have one com uh, public commenter, uh, Mr. Doug Johnson, and then we'll move on to comments or concerns. And again, Mr. Johnson, uh, we allow three minutes for public comment, and please state your name for the record. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Doug Johnson. Uh, been a normal resident for about uh, well, my whole life, but just bought our first house, beautiful 100-year-old house over on Broadway. Uh, I have two different comments tonight that I want to make, both regarding the uh, event at the uh, Haunted Trail over the weekend. Uh, first, my fun comment is I built a spooky garden arbor and fence that's sitting in my front yard, uh, and I have nowhere to store it and would love to donate to the town if anyone uh, has any need for it. I've got some pictures and some contact information, and uh, I'd love for someone other than the sanitation department to come pick it up. Uh, secondly, uh, what the real reason that I'm here is I uh, was extremely frustrated with a specific volunteer at this year's event. Uh, I don't know who this person is, nor is it my goal to find out. Uh, and I'm not attempting to seek any retribution or consequence or anything of that nature. Uh, I simply wish that this can be addressed so something like this doesn't happen again soon in the future. Uh, my 14-year-old son was volunteering to participate in the event. Started with an informational meeting on October the 12th, during which costumes were selected. It was decided that he and his friend would play the roles of Hannibal Lecter and one of his victims. Uh, in this case, that uh, victim just so happened to be a police officer. If you've seen the movie, you're probably familiar with the scene. Uh, Saturday, he showed up to have his makeup done, and it was at that time that this specific volunteer uh, announced that she was refusing to apply his makeup as agreed on, stating that blue lives matter, and an image of a bloody police officer would be offensive. I believe it was incorrect to take it upon herself to make that decision at that hour. Halloween costumes from a well-known movie make her uncomfortable. She had every right not to participate in the event. Plenty of more than enough time to make her feelings known. Uh, I do realize that being a police officer is a thankless job, especially in the divided times that we unfortunately live in. Uh, speaking for myself only, uh, I, any time that I have witnessed or interacted with normal police officers, uh, they have always been strictly professional and acted honorably. And I only mention that because I don't want to take any chance that my comments are in any way misconstrued as being anti-police in any way. That being said, the phrase Blue Lives Matter has in many ways been corrupted with uh, hateful ideologies and is regularly used as merely a spiteful counterpoint to saying Black Lives Matter. Though I can't say whether it was her intention to uh, phrase it in this negative way, I don't believe that anyone is ignorant enough to not understand its offensive interpretation, whether or not that was the intention. Uh, my last point, I find it highly inappropriate for anyone to attempt to raise this or any other political view to a child volunteering to do their own good for the community. Uh, and while I was extremely curious about this, and again, I don't care who she is or want to know who she is, I just hope that she can hear that and think about that, whether those were her intentions or not. Um, and that's all. Thank you, Council, for its time. Thank you. Uh, we move on to uh, comments or concerns before taking a motion for adjournment. Ms. Cummings. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to try to be brief in my closing tonight. Um, I hope everyone had a wonderful um, Halloween. Um, I know the Haunted Trail overall was successful, um, as well as Halloween Hoopla, which actually sold out. Um, and I know it rained during the treat feast uptown, but I did hear that there was still quite a few who participated. So I'm so glad to hear 
And so many of these events are geared toward our children and youth, yet um, I feel like those were the things most attacked tonight. Um, and that's just my opinion on that. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to us having further conversations. Um, I think in our 2040 vision, we talked about how do we engage our youth and with an attempt to do that on multiple levels, it still gets attacked. Um, and that's very interesting. We get compared to what someone else is doing. Um, we start questioning whether it should be done in whose wheelhouse it's in, um, which quite naturally anything done through the town um, is kind of help guided through staff. Hence, thus, we do have some volunteers and liaisons to kind of do the day to day so that the stress of it is not on the staff so they can focus on other work. Um, but we still want to engage our youth. We want to get them active early. Um, we're also trying to help create a pipeline for those interested in working for our town, staying in our town, seeing it as something, a place that they can stay. Um, you know, What's interesting, the very group that's getting attacked, they brought out the fact that um, our community identity actually feels like for them, as they're coming into young adulthood, exclusive, because we pride ourselves on being family oriented. So the question came up, as me being a, a young professional post-college, where do I fit in? But I think those are the things that are scaring some people, that this generation will start to speak and then you really have to listen. And so I'm, I'm hoping that we continue to engage them and be excited about it and be excited about what's to come and um, how we can help them and how they can also help continue to serve our community and the community they live in. That's all I have for tonight I'm and I hope everyone has a wonderful that, evening. That was not for you. That's okay. Ms. Cummings, I don't know where <laughs> I, I said from. what I had to say. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Smith. This is more of a public service announcement. The leaf vacuuming be begins next Monday uh, on November 8th. And as a reminder, when you're putting the leaves to be picked up, um, please keep them on your yard and not into the street where when rain comes, it has the potential for clogging up our storm sewers and leading to drainage issues. Um, the Town of Normal also separately will take away leave, uh, branches and sticks that you may pick up and you want to keep those separate from the, the leaves because they're using giant vacuums for the leaves and they don't tend to pick up branches very easily despite their suction power. Um, and we still do, in Normal, every week pick up uh, large garbage without a restricted time during the year to do that. So uh, just be mindful of that. On the website for the town, they will post which zones they're working in, and I've been told it's zone three. I'm getting an, an affirmative yes over there. And I myself find it very, very rewarding to work in the yard because the leaves don't talk back to you. And, and when you get work up a sweat, it's a sense of accomplishment. So um, we've got some beautiful fall colors out there, but when they start coming down, know that normal has a place for them. Thank you. Further comments or concerns? Ms. Reese. Um, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to mention a couple of um, things to look for um, this weekend in terms of continued excitement and events. This weekend is the annual holiday open house in Uptown Normal. And I did also want to mention that uh, the Normal Public Library is also hosting an event this weekend, and it is their model train show. So they will be having a model train show also Saturday and Sunday at the Normal Public Library from 9 to 5 on Saturday and 1 to 3 on Sunday. So it is a, a, going to be a busy weekend in Uptown, and we invite everyone to participate and enjoy the activities. Motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Preston. Aye. Mr. McCarthy? Aye. Mrs. Lorenz? Aye. Mr. Nord? Aye. Ms. Smith? Aye. Ms. Cummings? Aye. Mayor Coos? Aye. We are adjourned.